But look, God is a God that will redeem your time. And those chances when you missed it before and you missed it again. And if you like me, you may have missed it not once, twice, three times. You may have missed it many times. I'm going to tell you something. God's mercies are new every morning. Great as His faithfulness. But don't waste your grace. Don't waste your grace. Because God's grace, you know, put it like this. You got a bill you are manning, you are company. Right, it's due on the tenth of the month, so to speak, and you got a ten-day grace period, amen. All right, if you don't pay it by the twentieth, you're in trouble. God's got a grace period, my friends. I know a lot of folks don't want to hear that. Because his grace ran out on Sodom and Gomorrah. His grace ran out when he sent the flood. He's the same God as he was then, as he is today, as he was back then. He says he never changes. Don't waste your grace. But his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. That is in his word. You know, I like what Ron Ganoli said in his song. And he don't give you yesterday's blessings. He's got a new blessing for you every day. If you're not choosing death and curses and you're choosing life and blessings, then you've got a new blessing every day as well as life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Praise God. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, that the, there is in the, the tongue that is the power of life and death. Proverbs 18, 21, it says the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You've got to watch what this mouth says. Because your words will determine your destiny. If you say, I'm going to make it, you'll make it. If you keep on saying, I can't make it, I can't do it, I just can't do it, you won't do it. If you say, I can, you can. If you say, I can't, you've done condemned yourself. No matter what it is. It may be a particular area of your life you're trying to get free of. It might be something going on in your life that you need to get set free in. I mean, all of us are passing through stages with Christ in your Christian walk. Uh, some of you, I'm going to tell you something. You're like an infant. You're a baby. You're still a baby. You know, and babies go through stages too. I mean, first they got to learn how to sit up, hold their head up. As a Christian, when you first come to God, you've got to learn how to hold your head up. Then you've got to learn how to sit up. Then you learn how to crawl. Then you learn how to walk. Then you begin to talk. After a while, you get stronger. You can start running. The more you learn how to talk, your vocabulary gets better. You see? Now, I'm going to tell you something, brothers. When you're young in the Lord, when you're young in the Lord, you got to be aware of something. There's such a thing known as crib death. Sudden infant death syndrome. Because the devil will come and take you quickly. He hates baby Christians. You see, the devil is just full of hate. He has no love. He cannot offer you anything except hate. He cannot tell you one ounce of truth. The Bible says he's a father of lies and it's the only language he knows how to speak. So he will never tell you the truth. And Jesus says you need the truth because the truth will set you free. The truth may hurt, but when it sets you free, you'll feel good. You'll quit hurting. 
you know, me and my boys, two honest boys, what we're doing, we're going through a weight lifting program, and I keep telling them this situation here. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. If you're not going through something and you're not having some kind of pain in your life and you're working, but I'm going to tell you something, you're making an effort. If you're not, if you're, you're not having any pain from it, you're not going anywhere. You're not gaining nothing. You will not gain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, God didn't say it's going to be a cakewalk, but He said that He would not put more on you than you could handle. It's not too hard that you can't do it. See, the devil loves to lie to you and say, well, you can't do it. You ain't got the guts for it. And all these things you've done in your life, you're never going to be forgiven of all of them. It'll keep on reminding you. He says he's the accuser of the brethren. That's what the Bible says. He is the one that accuses you. He's the one, anytime you hear a voice inside that's speaking to you or somebody speaking to you saying, you done this, you done that. Look at you, you look bad. You can't do nothing because of that. How many ever heard this? You ain't nothing, you ain't never been nothing, you ain't going to be nothing. Huh? I'm going to tell you something. That voice comes to all of us sometime along the way. And some of us, we sit down and we keep on hearing it over and over and over. Say, you ain't nothing, you ain't never been nothing, and you ain't going to be nothing. Hey, I want to tell you something, brothers. That's the devil right there. You are somebody. Say it. Say, I am somebody. I am somebody in Jesus. You know, you've got to get your words to speak positive things about yourself because you're going to transform your life by what you say or you're going to destroy your life by what you say. And I'll show you where it's at. Look at Matthew 12. Jesus said it. In Matthew 12, Jesus said in verse 36 and 37, He says, but I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted or set free, and by your words you will be condemned or imprisoned eternally. See, so for by your words, you know, when you stand before the great judge, it's either going to be acquittal or guilty. And along with an acquittal, it's freedom. Along with a guilty judgment, it's eternal punishment. I mean, it don't end. It don't end. Eternity don't end. Heaven doesn't end. And hell won't end. Don't fear man. Man will kill your body. He will mess you up right and left. But God is the one you need to fear and respect. Because he's the one in the Bible says can send your mortal soul to hell. Hallelujah. You know, look at James with me, and we're going to close here shortly. Because, see, your words are going to determine your destiny. Brothers, a lot, of, a lot of the things that go along with having the right words in your mouth has to do with your faith. What kind of faith you got?
James 3. Verse 3 says, When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. It's just like verse 4 says, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great coach. Consider what a great fort is set on fire by a small spark. You see, your tongue is a very small part of the body, but it determines where you're going. It determines the direction you're going. The words you're speaking. You see, your words and your choices are going to determine your destiny here on earth now and in eternity. I mean, you can be blessed in this life. You can live a life of blessing and a life of joy. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It's just one quick step out of depression into joy. When you get the joy of the Lord, and Nehemiah said the joy of the Lord is your strength, when you get that joy going on around you, going on inside of you, I mean, all the things that are going on around you don't matter no more. I tell you what, I've walked through some terrible circumstances before in my life, and I've walked through them, but when I had the joy of the Lord, they did not get me down. Because see, that is a supernatural joy. It's something that the world can't give you. It's not a natural thing. It's not, it's not just being happy only. It's having a joy when you know your destiny. When you know that you know that you know that you are on your way today to God's house and you will eventually be there no matter what. You know nothing can hurt you. If God be for you, who can be against you? You see, God is the answer. Jesus is the answer for this world today. There are so many other gods out there today. There are so many other religions out there today. But I'm going to tell you, there's only one Savior out there who died on a cross and bled and died for you and me and for every sin that you and I ever committed or shall commit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, there is a judgment day coming, folks. Yes, there's a time coming, and there's going to be either blessed or you're going to be cursed. And where you're going to lie, where you're going to be when you leave this world is determined by what you do while you're in this world. You know, don't be waiting on a last minute pardon, brothers. Because it's time to get with God's program. Get out of the devil's program and get with God's program. Get in the spiritual loop. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of folk ain't in the spiritual loop. They're somewhere hanging out over here in a religious church. They're somewhere hanging out over here so dry that they don't even know the Spirit of God is alive today. That He can heal. He can set free. People can be delivered from demons. He, there's people out there, they don't know what God can do. I'm going to tell you, they're not in the spiritual loop. And they need to get out of where they're at and get into where God's at. Because God ain't there. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these folks just sitting around these churches and all they're doing is they're sitting there. They're, they're involved. They're waiting on a hearse to come by. They're, not, they're dead. Spiritually dead. They're just sitting around. They don't even know that there's a God that's alive out there. That He can meet your needs today. And He can meet your needs tomorrow. And He's just waiting to bless you. But I'm going to tell you something. The way that Jesus spoke to us in the book of John about how, how you're supposed to show God you love Him is by obeying Him, by obedience. He says, I, I desire obedience 
more than sacrifice. You obey him and you show him you love him. You don't want to hear it right now. You know, I will tell you the same thing that goes in your natural family with your children. Children show you they love you when they obey you. You show God you're His child. You show Him you love Him when you obey Him, when you do what He tells you to do. And right here, this Bible is all you need. This is what you need. This is your weapon of warfare. This is your sword right here. This Word of God will fight for you. But you got to get the Word down in you. And you got to let that Word take root. But that heart's got to be a heart that's firm so that it'll do something. You can be walking around full of the Word and it can be dead in you. I mean, you can have so much of the Word in you that you can fold it upside down, backwards and sideways and then you sleep. But if you don't have it, if it's not been fertilized and it didn't fall on fertile ground, on a fertile heart, where it took root, where it has grown and it's producing something in your life, God expects you to be fruitful. Spiritually fruitful. Hallelujah. He's the same today as he was yesterday. And I praise God that my God is alive today. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. You know. We made a little journey up here from Little Rock and uh, or a bit just outside Little Rock. And uh, my wife and her two oldest sons and become my sons have, uh, are from California. But they, they like it down here. You know, I've, I've about decided, you know, we're going to try to hang around for a little while longer yet. You know, I, I like to preach in different places. Like last week, it was a little uh, Missionary Baptist Church up in uh, Darnell, Arkansas, Father's Day. And uh, we're doing a little, uh, little preaching there around Benton area, Benton, Arkansas area, and then Little Rock. You see, God, God wants His Word to be heard, people. But if you don't use your mouth and you don't speak it, That's right. people are not going to know. It's the Bible says, how will they know if you do not tell them? You see, God's got more for you to do than just come to church and sit on a pew. He's got more for you to do than just read the Bible. He's got more for you to do than just pray. Uh -huh. Now some of you may have a ministry of prayer. But God's got something for you to do. You're not here by accident, brothers and sisters. I mean, God hadn't made one accident yet. He hadn't had one accident yet. Not one insurance claim as he had to make. And he didn't make no mistakes. And he's not going to. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And he said his word just surely as, as I have planned, so shall it be. You know, the sins of some men, the Bible tells us, are obvious. And we, they reach a, and we reach a place of judgment from them. Ahead of them. And that's in the book of Timothy. But I'm telling you what, what that's saying is, some of us, our sins are so obvious that the judgment is already in place. And it comes on you quickly. Now I've done a lot of things that's happened, that's happened to me just like that. I messed up. Those sins was obvious. Judgment was already there waiting on me. And sure enough, I got it. 
But then it goes on and it says that some of them, those sins of others trail behind them. What that means is a lot of folk will get away with a lot of things for a long time. And they will keep on getting away with it. And keep on getting away with it. And some of them won't get away with it until they die. But it also says this. It says in the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not cannot be hidden. That's First Timothy 5, 24 and 25, if you want to know. See, some good deeds are very obvious that you do, and you're very quickly rewarded by God for them. But those Many of them you do are not very well seen. But it says they cannot be hidden. And that means God will not forget to reward you for them. You see, there's a flip side to every coin, amen. Every coin you got in your pocket, you pull it out and you flip it out. 